Okay, this is what our finished unit is starting to look like here. Um, rather, you can use nuts and bolts to affix your dimmer and your transformer into your box. I had a rivet gun, so I just used pop rivets. Uh, but this is what the layout looks like, the way I've done mine. You can do yours however you want. Um, but I'm going to show you what we've got going on here with the wiring. Hopefully this is going to show up on camera well and it'll, it'll all make sense to you. But what I've got coming in here, this is my cord. Incidentally, I have taken an opportunity to put a knot in this cord in this power cord. And the reason I've done that is because after you've got this thing all set up and it's all wired in place and everything, you don't want to accidentally have the thing fall or something and and then end up pulling your wires loose or unsoldering or un, you know taking the wire nuts off however you've affixed your wires. So what I've done is just simply knotted it and that will hold the, the cord in place. Now what I've got, I've got two wires coming off of this standard plug and I've got the white one going into one side of the dimmer and then the other side of the dimmer I'm going to try to pick this up so you can see it but the other side of the dimmer it's uh, coming out and going to a point on our little fuse holder right and then at the bottom the other point on our fuse holder I've got it looping back to one of the black input wires on the transformer but I also have a little jumper wire coming off of it as well. It's going to one side of our little 120 volt neon lamp that we got. Now the black wire coming from our household current, it's going to the other side of our neon light and then branching off and going to the other black input side of our transformer. So real simple, just take your time with it you'll see that uh, this cord does not have, this is a two-prong cord, it's not a three-prong. Had it had a three-prong, I would have probably hooked it up here to this green wire on our plug, just to kind of ground that plug, or that dimmer, rather. <laughs> but I'm just going to leave it alone since I'm using a two-wire uh, two cord. Now the output side of the trans uh, transformer, it has three wires. It has two yellows and a black. Black is neutral, so I've just kind of cut it short and making sure it's not laying on anything and just pushed it out of the way. Our two yellow wires, that's our power. They're putting out 12 volts each. What I end up doing uh, is running one to one of the solder terminals on my bind plug or bind post, and the other is simply going to the other one. And when we get done, you know, we've got a nice, clean, fairly, I think, fairly clean uh, power supply. Now, if I put this all back together, Try to snap it all in place. You could see again. This is our finished product. I just need to put the corner bolt bolts in it to secure the lid to the box. Um, the way that I've wired this one, we have a two amp fuse for safety, and you just you know pop that out and you can get to the fuse. Um, I've got this light in here. Now let's say you plugged it in. Well, let's just do it. We've got it plugged in. And I can, what I would recommend is turn your dimmer all the way down and press it on. Down is counterclockwise, up is clockwise. Now we've got current going through it. And we can check it because as I dial up, my light comes on. And that tells me this is a hot unit. And just at a quick glance, I can tell it's hot. Now the cool thing about using this particular dimmer is that, let's say I get it all adjusted to where it's my perfect temperature for cutting with the wire and the table or apparatus that I'm using. Once I get it perfect, well, all I have to do is push it and it's, it's going to maintain that setting for next time I come to use that same apparatus. It just keeps you from having to adjust it every single time. Now, if we were to turn this on and the light wouldn't come on, even after we've turned it all the way clockwise to its full heat setting, that would tell me one of two things. Either I've plugged in my AC cord to a dead outlet or a tripped outlet, or my fuse is blown. And in either case, if the fuse is blown, um, I need to start investigating. I need to find out what happened. Do I have a shorted wire inside of it? Or, you know, maybe I've touched the leads and it got too hot, uh, you know, these output leads. So that's just a good safety feature that I highly recommend you're taking the money and the time to, to wire in. Now, 
This is the old one. Let's say you're not worried about the fuse. You just want to get a, get a system up quick and nasty and start cutting. Well, this is the old box that I have, minus the fuse and minus the light. And this one just ha it comes on as it comes up. Now, the bad thing about that, there's no push on or push off. So it means that I have to adjust the temperature every time. But if we look at this one, I've gone completely old school on this one with doing as little soldering as I could get away with. I've got, got my dimmer. I've got my, you can see we've, on the outputs of the transformer, my black wire not being used. My two yellow wires that are outputting 12 volts each are going soldered to the bind plug uh, terminals, bind post terminals. Now our core here, we've got a ground on this one. So I just wired it into the ground of the dimmer switch. Now the white, the white uh, portion of that power cord, if you can see that, is going into one, the input of the dimmer and the output, which, you know, they're the same, it's just a circuit. Uh, the output is going to our transformer lead. And then the other transformer input lead is coming straight off of the black on the extension cord there. So this one has no safety features. It doesn't have the light to show you that it's on, but it works just fine. There's no fuse, <laughs> none of that. But either way, these things will work just fine. Now I will do a little sample cut to show you how it works. Okay, I'm going to show you my sam uh, a sample cut using my existing bow, just a PVC bow that I've worked on. This one is, I've got, I like doing the PVC bow because I can wire my wiring inside of it and it's just less to trip over, <laughs> less to, uh, you know, worry about snagging on your work. Um, off the wire, we can see I've got my simple little uh, banana plugs. Now you can plug these in, it doesn't matter which one you plug in, whether red to red, black to black, because it, it just doesn't matter. But now I can, and incidentally on this bow, you can use stainless steel fishing leader, uh, you can use nichrome wire, you can use, uh, what else is it, a, a guitar string. The two smallest strings that you can get uh, for guitar string work great, uh, but they will pop, they will break on you. I'm using Renee wire, which is, I want to say it's like $30 per uh, 50 foot section of it. But I recommend you buying it if you're going to do a lot of cutting because Renee wire just, it's so strong and it doesn't like to break on you. So anyway, we're going to take our power supply here. We're going to turn it on and turn it up. I can feel the bow vibrating in my hand. I can feel that wire vibrating. You can see it heating up. And I'm just going to show you a little smoke from my last cut. But we can just drop it down. And you can see... It cuts like butter. <laughs> and turn it off. Same temperature stays set. And anyway, that concludes it. That concludes our video instructional on how to build your own power supply for your hot wire cutting for smaller apparatus. Now again, if we wanted to run a longer bow, we could, instead of using a 25 volt uh, transformer that runs at 2 amps, we could step it up to 4 amps. I would expect that at four, four and a half amps, you can probably, I would say you could probably run about a 50 inch bow uh, without any trouble at all. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at crash.hancock at gmail.com. And uh, I invite you to listen to The Crash Cast. You can find my podcast in iTunes, or you can listen to it right from the web at www.thecrashcast.com. Thanks for watching.